Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a thriller, drama film from 2018, titled Door Lock. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It's late at night in Seoul when Kang Soon Hae makes her way back to her apartment. When she gets home, she finds the lights not working and hears a weird sound coming from the closet. She goes to check and finds nothing inside, but before she can turn around, she's attacked by a mysterious figure. Many days later, Morning arrives at another apartment in the same building, and Cho Kyung Min sleeps without knowing there's a man cuddling her. This man wakes up when the alarm in his old watch rings, and he leaves after having breakfast with her food. Kyung Min wakes up a few minutes later and takes a painkiller for her headache, which lately she's been having every morning. She's surprised at how little milk she has left, and before leaving for work, she makes sure to put things in their right place. On her way out, she notices there's some dirt on her door lock keypad and cleans it before putting in the code. At work, Kyung Min gets a little frustrated when another one of the clerks keeps taking away her potential clients, which also angers Kyung Min's co-worker and best friend Oh Hyo Yo. Later, while on the train, they chat about work, unaware that Kim Gi Jong is watching them. Once Kyung Min arrives at her building, the night shift guard Han Dong Hoon gives her a box that the day shift guard left for her. She takes the box with her and goes to her apartment, finding a note from her mom on the door saying she couldn't open it and that she left the package at the reception. The lock lid however, is open. Kyung Min calls her mother to explain that she changes the password often and that she should call her about visiting in advance, she also asks her if she left the lid open, which the mother denies. After getting in bed, Kyung Min hears a noise outside, someone is trying to put a code on her lock and failing. That someone also tries to open the door quite violently, but they leave without succeeding. Kyung Min waits some seconds before looking through the peephole and opening the door, but there's nobody in the hallway except for a cigarette butt on the floor. She calls the police and asks them to take fingerprints off the cigarette, but they remind her that no matter how many times she reports these incidents, there's nothing they can do if there's no actual crime done. Kyung Min has no other choice but to go back to sleep, unaware that once again, there's a man in the apartment using her bathroom and falling asleep next to her. The following morning, she wakes up with another headache. When leaving from work, she checks with the day shift guard if it's possible to check the security cameras, and when he says it is, she agrees to do it when she comes back. Before going to work however, she stops by to meet with a realtor and see an apartment in another building, which is smaller than hers yet more expensive. During her lunch break, Hyo Yo teases her and tells her she should get a boyfriend for extra safety, like perhaps Kim Sung Ho, a co-worker that is always nice to her. Back at work, Kyung Min stands up for herself and doesn't let the other clerk take the next client, who turns out to be Gi Jong. In an effort to make a big sale, Kyung Min chit-chats with him and discovers their neighbors, Gi Jong even says he's seen her around. Once his transaction is over and she's given him her business card, he asks her out for coffee, and when she turns him down, he starts making a scene, saying she flirted with him first and she shouldn't fake it just for sales. Sun Ho comes in and defends her, calling security when the man won't listen to reason. In the evening, when she returns to her building, she sees Dong Hoon is being scolded by his boss because there always are incidents at night and they shouldn't need the police when he's around, something that never happens when the day shift guard is on. Kyung Min takes the elevator and a man gets inside with her to go to the same floor, so when they get there, she waits for him to be at his door before coming out as well. Later, after she goes to bed, the mysterious man that uses her apartment comes out from under the bed and sedates her before using her toothbrush and shower. He makes sure to clean every hair from the drain before joining Kyung Min and falling asleep next to her. The next day at work, her boss calls her to his office to explain her contract is over, but her performance has been good so the company wants to hire her as a permanent employee. She doesn't look too happy about this since she isn't in a good mental place right now, and later, while doing some extra hours, she gets a call on her phone from an unknown number. She doesn't pick it up, and she ignores it again when the stranger calls while she's at the bus stop, where she's suddenly approached by Gi Jong. Kyung Min tries to get away, but Gi Jong grabs her and tells her to take a taxi with him, reminding her she owes him for what happened at the bank. At that moment, Sun Ho arrives in his car and sends Gi Jong away before offering Kyung Min a ride, telling her it's okay to call him for help whenever she needs it. When she arrives at her apartment, she finds that the lights are not working and there's someone at her door. It's Sun Ho, who's brought the wallet she left in his car. As she opens the door to take it, he notices the lights are off and offers to fix it for her. Once the lights are working again, Kyung Min invites him to stay for coffee, and while he goes to the bathroom, she notices many things around the apartment have been moved. After wondering how he knew the number of her apartment, Kyung Min goes downstairs with the excuse that she'll buy coffee, but she's actually calling the police and asking them to check her apartment. Detective Lee arrives with an officer and when they open the door, they find Sun Ho dead and with his tie hanging on the doorknob. Kyung Min is taken to the police station to be interrogated because they think it's too much coincidence that a third person killed Sun Ho while she called the police, so they believe the murderer to be her partner in crime. There's not enough evidence to back this up though, in fact, all the previous reports she's made of someone trying to break into her apartment prove that she's a victim, so they let her go. When she returns to her job a few days later, 
her boss tells her the offer to make her a permanent employee is off the table now, and since her contract is over, she must return home unemployed. Back in her building, she asks the guard to see the security tapes, only to find out the cameras in the hallways are fake and there's only a recording of her in the elevator. He also mentions that the person that tried to open her door the other day was probably a drunk neighbor that got the doors confused. Still, Kyung Min worries, so she asks him to check her apartment before she enters it. Thankfully it's empty, but things have been moved around again, and there are coffee beans spilled on the floor. After calling her realtor to confirm she wants to move to a new place as soon as possible, she begins cleaning the beans and finds under the cupboard a key from another apartment. Remembering what the guard said about the neighbors, Kyung Min begins going from door to door trying to find which apartment the key belongs to. She ends up at Sung Hae's place, but it's empty, and it looks like nobody has been there in a long while. At least she gets her name from the mail, so she asks Hyo Yo to use the computer at work to get Sung Hae's card statement. It shows that every day at 8 p.m. she buys something that costs 3.20 at a local convenience store, except for Saturdays, when she goes at 1 p.m. The statement also has her phone number, so they try to call her and text her, but she doesn't reply. Since today is Saturday, they decide to go to the convenience store to see if they can meet her there. They find there's packed porridge that costs 3.20, but that doesn't mean anything, because she could be buying two cheaper things that add to that. They decide to take a break and have lunch right there in the store, and while eating, Hyo Yo gets a reply to her text as they see a woman buying the porridge. They follow her into a shady neighborhood and come across a split road, so Hyo Yo and Kyung Min split to cover more ground. After some running, Hyo Yo catches up with the woman and is disappointed to see she's not Sung Hae. Meanwhile, Kyung Min finds a cat eating from the porridge cup and when she looks behind the door of the building the animal runs into, she finds there is a bunch of those cups, all empty, looks like someone has been feeding the cat. She crosses the garden and approaches the house, discovering it has the same lock as the apartments in her building. After trying a few wrong codes, she remembers the night someone tried to enter her place and the dirt on the keypad, so she tries the code following the dirt pattern, and it works. The house seems to be empty at first, but when she reaches the bedroom, she finds the real Sung Hae tied to the bed, sleeping within four connected to her arm. Kyung Min calls 911 but she barely gets to tell them anything before the criminal returns, so she hangs up and hides under the bed. The mysterious man has Sung Hae's phone and is the one that has been answering Hyo Yo's texts, and now he's killing Sung Hae by injecting something in her fore as he explains that he's found someone else, a beautiful woman that lives on the floor under hers, meaning Kyung Min. When he leaves to grab something from the other room, she comes out from under the bed and hides behind the door just in time to see the man return with a saw and take the blanket off Sung Hae's body, revealing she's already missing her legs and her body will soon go through the same. Suddenly, the police sirens can be heard outside, so when the man approaches the window to see where they are, she takes the chance to leave the room and escape the house. As soon as she reaches the door though, she realizes she's dropped her phone and it is now ringing. The criminal hears this and comes closer, telling her she's forgetting her phone before he begins chasing her around town with his face covered by a mask and a cap. She cries out for help as she runs, but nobody hears her, so she ends up entering an abandoned store. The stranger finds her there, but when he's about to strike, Hyo Yo shows up and hits him with a handbarrow. The man quickly recovers and hits her in return, but at that moment, a police car passes by and Hyo Yo yells for help, so the criminal has no choice but to run away. Moments later, Detective Lee is scolding her both because he thinks they're lying. The house is empty, Kyung Min's phone is nowhere to be found, and the only thing she knows about the guy is that he wears an old school watch. They are suddenly interrupted by an officer that says they've found something, it's Sung Hae's body in the trash with Kyung Min's business card in her fingers. Many hours later, the police bring Gi Jong in for interrogation, since he had been given Kyung Min's card. Security cameras show he's been following her around too, he wears an old watch, and because he's a carpenter, he has access to tools like saws and knows how to use them. Detective Lee pushes until Gi Jong becomes angry and violent, making a mistake in his confession and earning him a reason to keep him locked up. After apologizing to them, Lee lets the women go home, promising they've got the case. Kyung Min finally moves into her new apartment, where she makes sure to put extra safety measures on her doors and windows. Meanwhile, Gi Jong is freed because there's not enough evidence to keep him arrested, so he goes to the apartment building to search for Kyung Min. When he hears she's moved, he makes up some story about him being her cousin and needing to tell her her dad is dying, so Dong Hoon gives him the new address. Moments later, Kyung Min gets a package delivered to her, inside there's the phone she has dropped at the killer's house with multiple pictures of her sleeping. Then, her new phone starts ringing with a call from Hyo Yo, when she picks up, she sees a hidden video of the murderer at her friend's house without her knowing. Kyung Min rushes out of her place without her keys and goes to Hyo Yo's building, which he manages to enter because someone is leaving when she arrives. In the video, the killer can be seen starting to work on a foot, so Kyung Min hurries to the right apartment, but she can't open the door. She grabs a fire extinguisher to start hitting the lock, but before she can go far, Gi Jiang shows up and hits her, intending to take her with him to have that coffee. A neighbor has heard the noises and Kyung Min's cries for help, so luckily for her, 
the police arrive then and tackle Gi Jiang to the ground. Now free, Kyung Min finishes breaking the lock and enters the apartment, finding Hyo Yo bleeding on her bed. Meanwhile, at her new apartment, a mysterious figure leaves her keys back where she left them. Sometime later, Kyung Min visits Hyo Yo at the hospital, she hasn't lost her foot, she only has a scar where the killer began cutting for the video, and she doesn't blame her friend for what happened. Lee talks to Kyung Min as well, telling her it all had been a trick and the criminal had recorded everything in advance to get her out of the apartment and catch her by surprise. They've arrested Gi Jiang and now they only need to wait for the DNA test results. He also gifts Kyung Min a security camera disguised as a penguin to help her feel safe. Kyung Min installs the camera when she returns home. Afterward, she goes to the convenience store, where she comes across Dong Hoon, although she doesn't recognize him at first. Conversation gets awkward when he starts mentioning how nobody will hurt her anymore now the criminal has been caught, so Kyung Min quickly pays for her things to get out of there, but she can't help turning around when she hears something very peculiar, Dong Hoon is spending 3.20. He is buying the same packed porridge the cat had been eating, and he also is wearing an old-fashioned watch. Getting worried, she rushes back to her place, where she gets a call from Lee telling her not to leave home. It turns out Gi Jong had been freed because the DNA didn't match, and now he's been found dead. When she suddenly notices a cup of porridge on her cupboard, she checks the security camera and sees Dong Hoon entering the apartment and hiding under her bed. He's still there and at that moment, he puts his hand out to grab her, so Kyung Min runs to the door, trying to escape, but Dong Hoon knocks her out before she can even open the door. Hours later, Lee begins looking for her, because he saw on the security camera that Dong Hoon took her away in his car. One of his fellow officers calls him and lets him know some important information they found out, Dong Hoon quit his job and disappeared the day after Gi Jong was killed. He also used to work in a place near Yangpyeong Lake, a hotel that closed business after a guest supposedly killed themselves. Dong Hoon moved to Seoul shortly after that incident and began working at Kyung Min's old building, which also has an unsolved case related to it. Meanwhile, Kyung Min wakes up in a strange room with Dong Hoon cuddling her. He's brought some things from her apartment and even changed her into her pajamas, saying he wants her to be comfortable, but she's been sedated all this time and right now there's an four connected to her arm. He's angry because she didn't recognize him at the store and tells her the door is open so she can leave any time, but if she does, he'll have to cut her feet and hands. When she suddenly starts coughing pretty badly, Dong Hoon comes closer to pet her head, so Kyung Min takes the chance and bites his ear before stabbing his hand with one of the needles from the nightstand. Still under the effect of the sedative, she drags her body out of the room until her legs are awake again to start running down the stairs, only to find all doors are locked, and the one room that isn't has its windows blocked. Hearing Dong Hoon coming closer with an axe, Kyung Min grabs a glass shard from the floor to defend herself, but when he's about to enter the room, a crash echoes in the house. It's Lee who has finally arrived to help her. He calls out her name and when she replies, Dong Hoon jumps behind him and both men begin fighting over the gun, causing some bullets to be shot in the air. Suddenly, Kyung Min doesn't hear any more noises, so she comes out of the room, grabs the axe she finds on the floor and goes looking for the men, only to find Dong Hoon has stabbed Lee. He plans to come for her next, so she pulls the carpet from under his feet to make him trip and grabs the gun to shoot him, but it doesn't have any bullets left. Dong Hoon grabs her by her clothes and hits her head on the floor a few times before retrieving his axe, but when he is about to start getting rid of the arm, she pushes him back by sticking her fingers on his wounds. This isn't enough to completely get him off her, in fact, it only angers him more, so he grabs her and tosses her against a wardrobe, which falls on top of both of them. Dong Hoon's hand ends up trapped under an edge with a nail, but he still tries to grab her with his free one, so Kyung Min does her best to keep him away by hitting and kicking him. She notices one of the sides of the wardrobe is about to come off so she tries to push it to create an opening, but Dong Hoon manages to free his hand then and puts both around her neck to choke her. Kyung Min responds by putting her hands on his shoulders too and pushing him, her intention only being to get him off her, but she ends up killing him by pushing his head against a wardrobe nail. Sometime later, Kyung Min is back to her normal life, living in her new apartment where she still hasn't finished unpacking. Before doing anything that day however, she checks under the bed to be sure it's empty. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.